Welcome to the weekly in web browsers and IPFS GUI team sync call. Uh, this week we have a demo filled action packed agenda. So let me just get that up on screen. Do, 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 boop, boop. In my act of someone who cares about GUIs, I have increased the font size in this document so we can actually read it when it's pasted up on calls. Ta da! Uh, we have an agenda, we have a note taker, that's Jim, and the recording has started. So uh, we'll start with two demos and then we'll go into miscellaneous other demos. All right, so who is first up? <laughs> As always, it is Lydell. Would you like to hit us with your highlights from last week, Lydell? Are you maybe muted? No, he's screen sharing. You are muted, Lydell. You are remaining muted together. How about now? Much, much better. <laughs> much better. All right. Uh, yep, so it was an eventful week. Um, I released a new stable version of IPFS Companion with Web UI being enabled uh, for embedded JS IPFS node, uh, which may go away soon. <laughs> I'll get to that later. Uh, yep. Um, we had an interesting discussion about uh, resolving uh, ENS names in IPFS Companion, and I mentioned it. It's like a long <laughs> research dump uh, made by me, but I mention it mostly on this call because out of that, I ca came up with an idea how to solve the origin problem for, uh, for local gateway. And basically, uh, if we make Go IPFS or JS IPFS an actual HTTP proxy, uh, HTTP proxy is able to basically uh, re generate responses for arbitrary hosts, and that would solve uh, the origin problem for us because uh, we would have a very nice URL uh, ending with that IPFS localhost, which is both self explanatory and also a much better UX for users. Um, so far, uh, I got uh, positive feedback and some good hints. I already like changed the namespace to uh, to no longer collide with MDNS. So, if anyone is interested, how local gateway could look in um, uh, web browser soon, uh, this is a good issue to follow. Uh, how it would uh, work automatically is that IPFS companion is able to set uh, HTTP proxy for arbitrary. Uh, URLs, so users would just install IPFS companion and the proxy would be automatically set. So those uh, domains, localhost domains, would be uh, proxied uh, by Go IPFS. Um, that's uh, very cool. That's yeah. That's like uh, solves uh, multiple UX and security problems, and will probably go this route. Uh, Mostly because we like, like don't have anything better <laughs> than this, and this does not require any new APIs, any new like changes in browsers. It will is yeah. like perfect. I think it's a great idea. And, uh, as soon as we get those uh, base thirty two CIDs. Yep, <laughs> and uh, on like less pleasant note is that uh, temporarily uh, IPFS Companion is no longer available on the Firefox store because we had like reproducibility issues. That's yeah, like a, my fault. <laughs> there's like a long no, it's like a, a long issue of issues, like a long list of issues, and uh, I managed to resolve all reproducibility issues in the Companion itself, but. Uh, the reviewer uh, noticed that it's not possible to build web UI, like to get the, exactly the same minified code. And uh, I open issue in uh, IPFS web UI. Uh, we'll have a discussion on this later, but basically uh, it's like an ongoing uh, thing that will be a priority for me uh, this week. So I'm blocked on that. Uh, and first I want to resolve uh, that problem, and then I will be probably finishing the work I had to put on pause, which is like parasite redirect opt out. I got like it's nearly done, but I not, did not manage to create a PR. So let's stop sharing screen and see some people. Super nice. Any quick questions for Lido? 
all good. Uh, in which case, Diogo, would you care to go next? Hey guys. Hey. <coughs> Hello. So last week, after our lengthy discussion about words and drop down and stuff, I just had a, a small examples of what we can add in this model. You probably remember. Yeah, this is just a bit. Uh, after this, basically, I I refactored the whole context menu. This thing here. Uh, before this highlighted is a component. This this is a file, and each one of these uh, have inside another component that was this one, the context menu. So you guys can imagine the huge DOM node that the huge DOM that will, will appear if you have a list with uh, 100 files, we would have a, 100 files with 100 context menu. So I had to decouple all of that logic and now we only have one context menu that works with every file. That uh, was a bit of work. I know it's just a tidy up, but performance-wise, it will be a, a big difference. Uh, that crashed some things, I, I already fixed it, so that was that. Now, uh, most of my work has been refactoring all the file lists to use React Virtualize, like uh, I talked about last week. Um, it's not finished yet, it has a lot of bugs. Uh, yeah, there's still rendering issues, I still need to fix some some things, but I hope to finish this uh, this week. I can show you guys an example. I want to do the same here. As you can see, uh, this is using you see this little outline. This is using React virtualized. It's only rendering what's inside this window. Uh, but as you can see, we have two scrolls. We have the the main scroll for the window and the little scroll for React virtualized. This is I don't like it, but so while I was checking the how to do this in the files, I noticed that there is a component that we can use to basically this is using React virtualize, but it's uh, overriding the scroll of the page, so we can scroll the page, but we're actually just scrolling on the React virtualize. What's happening? As you can see, there's a little glitch in the files; they come up and down. I'm not sure why that's what I have to fix, but other than that, all the, you remember all, all the glitch that was happening uh, here. It's not happening, it's just this little one. But yeah, so basically it's it's almost done, I think. Then I have to to work with the other interactions that's missing the checkbox when I check them. They're not appearing, but that's just some small details. So I think this is on the way. Can we see the storybook? Uh, so the, the reason for swapping out the files list for immediately rendered in, and swapping that for virtualized is so that we can handle huge directory listings. So Diogo's made a demo. So it's not really a demo because it's not working still. Uh, oh, no? It's not working. No, it's not working because I changed the... He, yeah. I, I, I just now put the, the window scroller because we we only had the windows, it's kind of working. Okay, I can still show, I can show. It. <laughs> we can uh, render. I don't know, one thousand files. It's giving me this error because of. So. But yeah. So so that that's cool. This is um, a stepping stone for the UI. Uh, there's a longer piece of work to get a paginated. API endpoint for directory listings, so that if a directory contains, you know, ten thousand plus entries, the UI doesn't lock up when it tries to render it. In the meantime, if a directory contains a thousand plus entries, React virtualized will mean that we only render the components that are in view rather than the full thousand item list. So that that keeps rendering fast, even in the presence of moderately large directories. It doesn't solve it for very large directories, because at that point, it will just blow out the browser's memory when it tries to download a humongous payload of like, here's a billion entry list. But, um, but this gets us gets us a lot you know, of the bell curve of directory sizes. <laughs> this gets us a lot of that. Question from Chris Waring. 
just a, just a quick one on how React virtualize works. Is that um, does does it render the objects uh, into view and remove them from the DOM based on the, the, the view size? So they'll only ever have the maximum amount of items. Um, yes. oh, cool. Exactly so, that. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, assuming um, that it might actually continue to them on while you're scrolling, and then uh, no, yeah, no, it just renders it's, the one. It, it turned up pretty quickly when I was building the IPLD Explorer. Um, when I, I had nodes with like 5,000 links and the entire website locked up when I tried to render it, so I had to swap out for Virtualize at that point. It's, um, it's been working well there for a while. Yeah, and by basically uh, files list was the, the only thing that was left to use the React Virtualize because we are already using the Explorer and the peer stage. So it makes sense to to apply it here, but this is a bit more complicated because it has a lot of interactions, drag and drops, uh, checkboxes and other things. So yeah, hopefully this week it will be finished and we can ship the new version of the web UI. And that's it for me. Super cool. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it's me. I think um, Enrique can't be with us this week. Um, so I'll just quickly, uh, he is mostly on holiday, but as in, in overworking fashion, he has done one important thing, which is we got the IPFS desktop. Um, we've been working on getting signed builds for OSX and Windows, and the OSX one landed a couple of weeks ago, and the Windows one landed last week, so he's upgraded the build pipeline to include the Windows certificate, so future releases of desktop will be signed which means fewer warnings on install, which is good. UX win. Um, okay, what was I doing? Uh, da, 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 da. No, I don't think I need to share my screen for that. Let me cancel. Do, 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 do. Uh, not a huge amount from me this week. Mostly been um, doing management tasks. But the exciting one is, there's two exciting ones. One is... Uh, we're about to get Countly.ipfs.io, so we'll be able to get telemetry um, from our self-hosted analytics for web UI and desktop. Um, I'm expecting that to land this week, so that next week I can wire it into, it's already wired into web UI, just need to get that PR merged. And then after that, I'm going to add additional analytics for desktop's drop-down menu. But other than that, we're good to go. On the uh, and that's all. Um, it respects the user's do not track preference in their browser. Um, and the other one was uh, we got GitHub Actions enabled for all our orgs, so we can start experimenting with those if that is our want, um, which connects to the agenda point, which is uh, Jenkins has gone away as our CI, and that was how we were publishing all our websites. So I won't talk too much about that. We can circle back to that at the end. Um, and next week, we are releasing, I think, Web UI 2.4 with all the files improvements that we've been working on. Uh, I think we got to the end of the list, so that's very exciting. Uh, gonna, that's going to drop. And... Uh, the desktop is just a couple of tests away from being ready for release as well. So we might be having two releases this week. The, the excitement is tangible. Um, bum, 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 bum. And then I've got a background task to add analytics to a bunch of things, but hey. Uh, that's me. Terry, did you want to do an update? Sure, yeah, mostly what I've been working on. I'm in San Francisco this week with the community team doing a little hacking and bonding and whatnot. So Michael and I spent some time yesterday looking at the file tutorial, like how the uploading will even work and what the UI would look like for that. So I can show you that at some point. I don't know if you'd rather do it now or later on. Do you care? I think, I think um, well, you could go for it now. You're okay. in it. Sure. Uh, let's find the. Ooh, oh, so many windows. Okay. Sure. There's something here. Look, a slide deck. Okay. There we go. So, for those who haven't seen what a normal lesson looks like, you end up with just an exercise box like this, and you update some code, and you hit submit and get some feedback. And that's the only task that you have to do. But with the new lessons, 
there will be some in which you need to actually upload a file into the browser so that we can then work with it or console log stuff about it or whatever we're going to do. So I'm working on kind of what this looks like and I'm very open to feedback. I just got a little bit of feedback from the design team, which I've implemented a tiny bit of, and I can tell you some more of the things they suggested. Um, so making this kind of programmatically know whether it's file lesson or not and add these little headers for the multiple steps. And then I stole this. My big accomplishment of the week is I figured out how to copy elements from Google, the inspector in Chrome, which I didn't know how to do. So that means I don't have to learn where to find your HTML and all your React files to steal things from you. It's very exciting. Um, and then this, which Michael made this uh, thing, there's something broken about it right now. So if you would like to, click to upload you have to do it twice you can also drag things into it pretend that these that the file name or file names are next to this so the design is more like what you just saw and pretend that this which is not in the div of this white thing is sitting above it which is where i mean it to be just to match this pattern one of the things they suggested on the other call is that we could come up with some sort of like redo icon that you'd get familiar with the meaning of and use that instead of the words. Um, but consistency was one of the asks on that call. Um, yeah, so if you decide these are not the files you want to be working with, it will just go back to this version. Um, and then you would do whatever your code is and hit submit. Right now, this is built in a way that that won't work. But pretend that it will evaluate both whether you have indeed uploaded a file and whether you put in whatever code we want you to do and give you the appropriate uh, messages and let you move on to the next lesson as you otherwise would. Um, some of the other feedback that I got on the design call was that they'd like to see like, you know, here's, there's first upload a file, next do this. They would rather see it as a small chunk of text under this header and then a small chunk of text under this header. Um, and we talked about whether we might want to have like little check mark icons appear as you do each of these, or if we want to disable the submit button until you have done both of them, as opposed to you doing it and then us telling you that you didn't do one. Um, so some suggestions along those lines for that kind of stuff. But I'm I'm very open to other suggestions because you guys are all very front endy. Um, those suggestions sound wise, just uh, knowing how it is implemented. I also know that there's a ton of work to do. Yeah, this the splitting of this text yeah. will be a problem. Um, it's going to be fiddly, yeah. Yeah, except I think, no, I don't know. We can, we the, can do that. The potential switch to ViewPress might make it work differently than it would now. So that's what I said to them. I was like, I don't know, that seems like a lot of... Whatever. Um, but, yeah, that's is not is not going to solve all our all our problems. Yeah. Right. So. So yes, that might be a challenge. Um, any other thoughts, ideas? Uh, not a current, but I will. Um, if you drop a link to the issue on the chat, sure. people might people might add their thoughts. I can do that. Um, Oh, and then maybe I can figure out how to change that SVG of the file icon so it's this teal color or something so it looks a little more consistent. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. We can help with that. All right. Um, also, um, uh, IPFS CSS has uh, Agata's IPFS icon set in, so you might find some icons in there. IPFS CSS? Yeah. Is this just CSS that is already in my project or I believe it is yeah okay uh, we can talk later if I don't know where it is that's okay I'll <laughs> drop a I'll drop a link to it on the chat and we can add it to the notes uh, somewhere there is a uh, icons page that is kind of rough but it shows you what's available Do -do -do. Mm -hmm. yeah she sent me that one I don't know if she got it from there or somewhere else but yeah. uh, there's this there's this thing Ooh. which is linked linked to from uh, the IPFS CSS page. It shows ah, you like, the two variants. Maybe that made the glyph flavor. Maybe. Um, you can get to that from IPFS CSS, which is not what is here. To this thing. Cool. And somewhere down here, there's a link to the icons. Cool. Thanks. Um, all right. 
Whoa. Let me stop sharing. Back to the agenda. Stay focused. Do, 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 do. Um, oh, so we raised the head. Um, Jim Pick, do you want to do a demo? Um, should I do the demo now or are we doing the demos after? I am, well, what I'm doing now is just running through the document, the agenda document in order. So Terry was in, you're next. Alan can go after you. Um, okay. Um, do you need I'll, I'll do my demo after, after everybody does their updates. Okay, um, fair enough. Yeah. Alan, Alan, do your update. Okay. Alan, sure, are you, you ready to go? He's on mute. He's ready. He's charging up. Oh, sorry. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me just share my desktop. Uh, that one. Share. Okay. So, uh, okay. Um, okay. So, what was I doing last week? Uh, I, uh, I'm working on this tool called IM, IM, IPFS Install Manager, and I added this uh, command called ls. <laughs> Uh, to it, and uh, that allows it to, or basically it looks like a git, uh, git output, but it lists out the, uh, the um, versions you've got installed of IPFS, uh, and points out the one that you're currently using as well, and highlights it in green with a little star like git does, um, and it can also show you all of the available versions um, for different implementations um, that you could install, and which the ones you have got installed are in white, and the ones that are, you don't have are in red. Etc. So that's kind of cool. Um, uh, where were we? Over here. That's it. Um, secondly, I made a whole bunch of progress on CID v1 base 32 this week um, and uh, sent out some pull requests there. So that's good. It's coming along. We'll be with you soon. Um, and then uh, the DHT pull request, adding DHT to JS IBFS, has now been merged. Uh, and that is super good news um, it, it will be available in the 0.35 release speaking of which i released a pre-release of 0.35 with this pull request in it because why not uh but there there is um there's dragons if you're using this uh i had noticed problems such as unable to update lock within the state stale threshold so there's a bug there um and it pegs the cpu at 100 percent if you're unlucky um, but it's there, and so I can show you right now. I'm looking at. Um, oh, can you see my screen? Right? Yeah. Uh, I'm connected. So I'm using Companion. Uh, yeah. See, it's it's actually pegging my CPU right now, um, but it's got a mismatch mismatch in peer number. Anyway, look, 341 or 482, whichever number you choose to uh, choose to believe there, uh, is more than the 10 that you usually get. So um, things are things are happening, although there's a bug that needs to be fixed before it can be released. So um, that's that's um, that's getting resolved. In other news, um, uh, there was this one weird trick uh, that I. Uh, thanks to Kuba, uh, he pointed out that if we use the test profile for Go IPFS um, in our tests, that the tests might be um, might be a bit faster. So I thought, why not? Heck, why not? Why not give it a go? So I, I gave it a go, uh, and the test time the time it took to run the node tests locally on my laptop went from fourteen minutes to five minutes. <laughs> and I was like, wow. That's incredible. Um, so that's a big, big win. Um, I just applied it everywhere, and that pull request has been merged, and um, and that's all good. And now CI has changed also to use Travis. Um, so uh, we are we are we are really rocketing with the CI this week. So uh, I'm super happy. Um, I'm not blocked on anything. Next up, I, I'd like to address the problem with the CPU being. Pegged at 100%, um, and or, or just do some stuff to sort that out um, as soon as I get a chance. Um, and uh, I am also going to hopefully continue with the CIDB1 base 32 stuff. Uh, and that's my update. That's all I have. I have a quick question about the 0.35 release of JSIPFS. Um, is it when is it? What's the time window that you're looking at? Is it like this week, next week, two weeks? 
Seeing as it only in the release notes we have only the DHT, it really depends on how long it takes to resolve the issues with um, with the stability of libp2b and the DHT that's in there right now. Um, with the advent of the DHT, I think we because we are making that many more connections, um, and I think it's going to uncover a whole bunch of bugs that we haven't seen before now that are going to need to be addressed and. At the moment, I don't, I can't really say for sure how long that might be. Um, it was more to to frame my question. It was more that um, it would be nice to get the two point four release of WebUI in it. Um, and it sounds like we have a smaller distance to go to get WebUI two point four ready to ship than you have for. Oh, dot thirty five. Yeah, I mean, anything, else. anything. If that gets ready before, then I'll put it in. No problem. Um, Great. I I'd, I imagine this will take at least a couple of weeks to sort out. Um, Super. So. It, it was more to say, yes, please, I would like to do that because there's a bunch of good improvements in 2.4 that should go I, I would like to have them. We will try not to hold up your release schedule, <laughs> Mr. JS. <laughs> no, don't, you, you, I'm sure you won't. There's a lot of testing we need to do on the DHT. Um, like it's not only the, you know, the, the fact that it's taking the CPU, but we need to make sure that we, you know, we, it works and it works well um, and isn't going to pollute the pollute what's out there already in, in any way. Uh, and yeah, so there, there's a way to go. But that the pull request for that for adding the DHT has been open forever and the tests all passed, so it needed to get merged. But now we need some real real, real world tests and we need to get the interrupt tests all up and running and, and, and ready as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's a little while away, I'd say. Um, but you can still have a go if you want. Thanks. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Um, Hugo, Mr. Diaz, would you like to give us your highlights from last week? Yes. So I've been in London with Ole and Alex and Alan and everyone from the infrastructure infrastructure team. So basically, I've been all of <laughs> I've been working on the Travis um, migration and. Uh, all I did was around this topic. Um, the important stuff is all in this issue that I want to try to find the tab. How can I? The one thing anyone... these calls always reveal that every single one of us has complete browser tab bankruptcy. It's great. <laughs> So if anyone wants to help out with this mission, you can see the issue, put your, the repo you're going to do, or you're going to ask in this list, you have the instructions here to add Travis to your repo. Um, the one thing you should look at is this first part. If in any way you are uh, using or comparing file uh, without this, your Windows job will probably break. Things will not match. So you should be careful about this part if you are doing this type of things, like comparing files or CIDs. You should add lines uh, like this to your Git attributes file in your specific repo. Uh, everything else is just straightforward, just copy paste to what everything in here. You create a Travis file, you add your nice patch to the README, and you are good to go. Right now, we are in the process of moving everyone because Jenkins died and didn't like tell that it died to everyone else. So everyone is kind of finding out that no more Jenkins machines are running. So be careful with that and help us out. So for the next couple of days, I'll be looking at the benchmark uh, repo from the near farm guys. As we, I'm here with the infra team, we're gonna check everything in there and make sure we can 
uh, deal with it and understand everything that is in there and probably try to find a way to uh, manage and probably replicate that infrastructure to other uh, working groups. So that will be it. I'll be also be integrating the benchmarks on the on Travis, the nightly builds or the nightly runs, and also um, some runs on the PRs with uh, specific uh, tests. Not all of them because all of them take long time to finish, but some of them, the most important ones, will probably be running them on each pull request. Uh, and yeah. As we finish the um, migration to the to Travis, I will try to finish the the bundle size PRs, so they can be included on the next release of IPFS. But yeah, we are having some troubles with the PHP and Windows, so let's see if we can make it. It's basically it for me. Has anyone any questions? All good. Okay. Um, I think that is the round of updates. Let me share my screen and we can jump back to the agenda. Da -da 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 -da. I'm going to jump in over you. <laughs> okay. So Q1 midpoint scoring. We have uh, the in web browsers working group and the IPFS GUI team have some objectives and some key results. And we're halfway through the first quarter. So uh, now is the time to go through and review, are we, are we building what we said we thought was important to build a month and a half ago, or are our memories so bad that we have drifted off onto other things? Um, hopefully not, um, but now is the point to, to check in with that. Um, uh, please remember to go and look at the spreadsheet and if your name is next to a thing make sure it has a score next to it and make sure that you think you're doing the right thing um, that's enough of that uh, this has been covered already next thing on the agenda CI is dead long live CI uh, the key point here is that we were using Jenkins and it's gone away uh, it was difficult to maintain it, and it wasn't super reliable. So it, it's now a kind of choose-your-own-adventure in CI world, and the, the current recommendation is to use Travis. Good news for the GUI team is we never left. <laughs> um, but uh, we've been using Travis all along. Uh, but we have all the website deploys um, depend on uh, Jenkins had the uh, token to update the DNS when master changed on github uh, we would autumn we would do a build uh, do a production build of the website add the site route to ipfs get the cid out and then update the dns link uh, with the new cid to to cause humans to be able to see the new website uh, that doesn't work anymore so we need to fix that um, the current there's a conversation with infra around secrets, secrets management and the best way to do that. Um, but FYI, if you push some changes to any of our websites right now, chances are, even if the PR gets merged, you won't see the changes go live. So this is your, this is your warning. Consider yourself warned. All right, next thing on the agenda. Andrew has a demo. This is a work in progress. So I asked him to demo it just moments ago. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and hand the mic over to Andrew Nesbitt. Hello. Uh, hey. Zoom screen sharing. This works like this. Ah, it works, works pretty good. I can see your, your massive screen. Yes. Sorry. 27 inch. Whoa. Very wide. Um, yeah. So uh, tiniest demo ever. I've been investigating. I'm... Uh, looking at package management and how to IPFS can make that better. Um, we already have this wonderful project, NPM on IPFS, which exists on the internet, uh, the regular internet under registry.js.ipfs. 
uh, and I made the most noddy uh, little UI so you could actually go and look up a package. So we can look up IPFS, the node module. It takes a little while because it proxies through another service that adds the cause headers uh, <laughs> right now because the cause headers are not available on the registry. And I'm my home internet is currently being tethered through my phone um, because it's awful. So everything takes a little bit of time. Uh, so we pulled out Alan's latest version. This has come from this registry rather than directly from the NPM uh, standard registry. And currently the new uh, pre-release is not mirrored onto uh, the IPFS NPM registry. Uh, I guess because no one has pulled it yet. Uh, and so it's not found its way on there. Whereas if we put in something different, then it should eventually uh, come up with a CID. Um, you can click on this and go look on explore, but it never successfully resolves to anything. I suspect because um, the registry is using uh, JS IPFS and that is not connected to the DHT because it's the old version of that. Uh, at least that's what I'm understanding from speaking to uh, Alex. Um, but potentially there's uh, a way of essentially kind of having uh, a browse. This is hosted on GitHub pages right now, but it would be easy enough to make that available, that single HTML page on IPFS as a way of exploring information about packages, potentially even once there's DHT support, being able to see how many other people have this package available as well, which is an interesting metric that you, you would never usually see from NPM. Um, but that's all, uh, and it's, it's got some real basic styling. Uh, I think it just picks up your browser's default font. It's perfect. Um, I think that, so yeah, it's the, the blocks that are on uh, IPFS on NPM, so the NPM mirror that we have, aren't being announced to the DHT, so there's no way to discover them. Um, one thought is if we added, if we connected the NPM on IPFS mirror servers to the gateway infrastructure, such that they were then part of the gateway node swarm, then you could just open the directory directly on ipfs.io slash ipfs slash cid and it would it, when you look for blocks you you simultaneously ask your connected swarm and search the dht so if if they were in a swarm together that it, it could work you could link through to the directory of the thing that you want to see cool um jim pick has a hand um, I just this is a crazy idea, but uh, I've been playing around with uh, ES6 modules using the unpackage CDN, which unpacks each because like NPM is tarballs; they're all like sort of zipped up. But if you blow them apart, that seems like that'd be perfect for IPFS. Because this is um, um, you, this is an idea that is floating around. Yeah, yeah, um, and then, and then it'd be like if you could like require from mm. NPM module. But you go through your compile step that just resolves it to. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, Jim Pick, you are on the money. So I don't know. It seems like that wouldn't actually be hard to do. We just have to get the data there. So. <laughs> You're right. Once Alex and Andrew have done all the work to make, make the thing <laughs> thing exist, and linking to it is pretty easy. That's the that's the magic of links, right? You get all this value. Yeah. The value. The value like, like we we could actually yeah. even right. have like a service worker like like. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm like off on uh, playing with Lunet and stuff, but like you could have the service worker say, "Hey, it's a JS file. Oh, it's an npm link. Oh, I'll just rewrite that to the resolved thing on these unpacked CD uh, packages, which are already there." And then, if you ca if you carry on down this line of reasoning, Jim, you will end up on the package managers working group. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Jim. This segues pretty nicely to your wild future tech demo. Okay, so um, Patrick Nesbitt, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that's awesome.
Uh, let's see. I can never find the share button. Okay. Here it is. Okay, so I'll hide this one. Um, so demo. Um, so I was playing around. So we, we had Gozala Rackley on the call um, in January, and he demoed Lunet, and I watched it, and I've been watching what he's been doing. I've been reading his stuff, and I still had no idea what it was. So it was, <laughs> it's, um, but um, there's this event in Portland next week, um, and I live in Vancouver, so it's only eight hour drive, and I tend to get down there maybe twice a year. So I figured I want to go see is a, a that that project I was involved in that project last year. So I want to go down there and hang out with people. Um, so Iraqis in uh, Portland, also Kyle Drake's there. So I'm gonna kill three birds with one stone. So go down next week. So I really wanted to figure out what the Lunet thing was, and it's got this like, crazy thing here. And so I spent uh, Saturday and I like traced through and figured out what all the JavaScript was doing and. It's like really crazy, but uh, so if, if you if you don't know what it is, and I didn't know what it was, it's basically a way of um, pub taking a website that's been a static website that's been published on IPFS, which you can already read through the IPFS gateway, uh, which is just giving you the raw files. Um, but the gateway has to do a lot of work, like the gateway, the public gateway that our company maintains. Uh, has to, you know, we have to run all these IPFS nodes and it's, it, we're paying the bandwidth costs of all these packets flying to then customers. Um, you know, what, what this thing lets, lets the, the browser do is the, if you're on a laptop, you can run the IPFS daemon on your laptop and it, um, that'll do all the work connecting to the network. And the web, the web browser will just talk to your local IPFS daemon running on uh, your machine. Um, previously, we do, we do that with uh, IPFS Companion. Uh, but IPFS Companion, you have to install an extension, which is difficult to convince people to do, especially if they've never uh, come to, if they don't even know what IPFS is in the first place. Like, so, for those people, it's like either publish on the public gateway where uh, Protocol Labs has to pay for all the bandwidth and all the infrastructure, um, or convince them to install the, the companion. So Rackley has been sort of thinking about this problem. He's, he worked on the extension, extension extensions for Firefox for, for called DWeb. Um, but again, that's like installing another extension. Um, he's, he's trying to think like, how can, you just publish a website and people can go to it and it's just going to work. And um, so basically it would work by doing a fallback where it would probably, we probably integrate, use JS IPFS and JS IPFS in the browser would go and out on the, on the network. But we really want people to run their own daemons. Uh, so, so it's sort of, it's just, a, it's just another way of put, putting this all together. Um, which it basically is going to people, you'll be able to publish a website. Everybody in the world will be able to access it on their phone, whatever. Uh, but the power users are going to be, be able to run an IPFS daemon and keep everything cached locally and then they'll be able to work offline. And um, so it's sort of an ex exploration at this stage. So I don't think I explained this well at all. <laughs> Anyway, so he, he's put this thing out and he's got uh, it installed on uh, his server. He's got a demo here, Peerdium. I'm not going to run it again because he's already done it. Um, but what I, I just wanted to install it myself. Um, on my machine, I've already got Nginx set up and I already was playing around with uh, getting wildcard DNS certificates um, from Let's Encrypt. And so I went once, I did one step that uh, Rackley hadn't done was I set up a wildcard DNS and then I did the the base 32 um, CIDs and then the nice thing about those is you can stick them in a subdomain. So um, so how Lunet works is when you go to Lunet, there's uh, there's two files. There's only two files and 
that have to be served up from um, on this domain and they don't contain the content at all so they can be completely generated so I, I just decided to write a little Node.js program. Um, oh, here it is. Wait a second. Oh, that is the Node.js program. It's too small. Um, so there's no requires or anything. This is just plain Node.js. Hey, just, Jim, could oh. you increase, increase the font size a little, or otherwise, if oh, it's oh. important to the. Yeah, so. Um, this is everything I need to do apart from the Nginx setup and the Let's Encrypt to basically have, you know, my own equivalent of an IPFS gateway. Except I don't have to run IPFS myself on my set, my end, like it's because Lunet is asking the users to run IPFS themselves, or maybe there'll be the GS IPFS fallback. The, I think that probably the key thing is like uh, the gateway being like the HTTP to IPFS network gateway. We often truncate that idea to. IPFS gateway, and I think for some people that doesn't, yeah, doesn't so, explain it. So, anyway, so there's this little simple piece of JavaScript code which you run on Node.js that essentially lets anybody set up their own IPFS public gateway, essentially. But they don't have to worry about like um, serving all the file content themselves because that's off shipped off to the individuals that are accessing the content. OK, I, I think we have to figure out how to describe this better. So I did a terrible job. So the, the, the dream is pretty clear in that um, you want people to have a, a, a more of an IPFS participation without installing a plugin. Mm -hmm. um, so, so anyways, I needed a name for this thing. And because we have Baffy, I just called it Baffyplex. So nice. I don't or anything yet, but this is just, uh, I just threw this together on the weekend. Um, so, okay, on to the demo. So the first thing Ooh. is, uh, so he, he already had it so you could publish to IPFS. Uh, so this is going to get published. So before I hit publish, he would just have one of these links here, and he'd actually store a file in IPFS through the gateway. Um, what I've done is I've added another, but it would just do this sort of encrypted blob, and then we'd have to access it through this URL. I just wanted to open, store the raw text. OK, so that's just a, an HTML file with a pre-tag and uh, whatever I type. So that was instant publishing, which is nice. Um, but you know the thing with IPFS or DAT or anything like I've built instant publishing for for DAT before, but you need pinning. Like you can't just like publish. Like like people will need the files to stick around. So um, there's magic going on here. So there's a, I built a, an iframe behind this. So there's an iframe you can't see it. Um, and it says when I it said pinning stash pending. So I'll show you the iframe here. Um, and there's actually an iframe here, but you can't see it. But what I did was I put peer base into the iframe. So peer base is the project I've been working on since September in Pedro's group. And that allows you to synchronize things peer to peer from web browsers. So this is actually a different, um, this is the origin, that's the iframe. So, um, but the problem with uh, before is you couldn't like run them both. Like you, if you ran two peer bases in different tabs, that would just be really, really bad. Like, like it, it couldn't deal with that. Um, Fortunately, I went to Tokyo uh, in November and I met um, uh, Andre Sitnik, um, and you might know him from Post CSS, and he's built this thing called Logux, which is uh, inspired by some work that Viktor Gushenko was doing, who is also like <laughs> helping us out on our team. Everything's connected. It's crazy. Um, so, but this has this nice uh, way of passing messages 
back and forth between servers, but also he's figured out being the front end, front end wizard that he is, how to do like sort of leader election in um, iframes or in, in not in iframes in browser tabs. So, um, so okay, so when, when I uh, published it this here, um, it sent a message to the iframe with the CID. And this thing caught the message and it added it to a, a set that's stored in Peerbase. And so I can, you can see I have pending pin requests here. Now, the nice thing is I can run multiple of these. So there's already one in the iframe here, which you can't see, but this is, a, this is in the browser tab, same origin. And here's another browser tab. So these are all the same web browser. Um, and you can see this one has a role of leader. This one has a follower. So the one that is in the iframe here is also a follower. So I could, you can see the browser election. I have a little button here to hit resign. And you can't see it, but the, the leader is probably the one that's hidden in the iframe here. Um, and everything's talking, so I can click and send messages to, to each other. Um, but also, like when I pinned here, um, um, it's using logx to send this, and then only in the only in the one that's the uh, leader, that's the one that's um, running peerbase. And so when the leader election happens, uh, the the one that becomes the leader starts up peerbase, and if for some reason it loses it, another one will come up and pick it up. So, uh, anyways, the, the the amazing thing it works. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, okay. that is the amazing thing. So I use I can write a bot that will just connect to the same collaboration. You know, say, hey, pending pin requests, I'm gonna pin it. So since I don't actually have the bot written yet, um, I'm just going to be the bot. And I just can go um pin. I love it. ID. So, so you have it open in a tab and when okay. you see a new hit pin entry, uh, oh. Jim can edit. Demo. Okay, so I pin I pin the CID, and since I'm the bot, I'm just going to say, "Hey, I pinned it." <laughs> uh, you you never saw any of this because this is all hidden happening in the, in, in the hidden iframe, but it says pin. So oh, you are the mechanical Turk, Jim Pick. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's a lot of stuff there, um, but all the u end user has to see is this, and. They're, they can publish way in this technique. Anybody can just go crazy and just publish stuff. Um, they'll they'll have to have the pitter, you know, configured, you know, in the iframe with some, the robot or something that's listening to it that's actually pinning the content. Um, the stuff that's in the iframe, um, this could be all based on like private user preferences. So users could bring their own pinner bring their own gateways with this sort of technique, but synchronize it between multiple devices. So. That's super cool. Um, we're, all, we're out of time, so. Okay. Any, la any last, last thoughts? Okay. Uh, that's super rad. Um, I'm assuming that you have dropped a link to this in the agenda. Um, yeah, so uh, I encourage people to try it. It's just running off my iMac right now, so. Uh, <laughs> But yeah. the thing is, the nice thing is there really isn't much running on my iMac. Uh, the problem with Lunet is right now it only works if you have IPFS daemon running locally, and you also have to have cores headers set up on it. So, but if you have those two requirements, it might work. Very cool. So. Um, is there a link to the to a GitHub repo in the notes? Uh, yes. Yeah. Super cool. All right. Um, well then. Um, any anyone else got any quick questions? We're we're at time, so we should keep them just quick. Uh, just like a brief uh, highlight that uh, uh, this election uh, could be used in multiple contexts. When you have JSA PFS in your browser, let's say you 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 don't want to use local users' node. You just want to have JSA PFS on your website, but, but your users have a habit of opening multiple tabs of your website. Mm -hmm. 
you basically could solve the problem of having uh, multiple nodes, uh, multiple instances of JSIPFS for the same origin. Mm -hmm. Even yeah, well, that's, exa that's exactly what I'm doing here because uh, Peerbase has JSIPFS in it. Yeah, yeah. So it's like useful not only in the context uh, of the, this like access point based service worker experimentation that Iraqli is doing, but even like solving the, this separate small problem for people who want to run JSIPFS in their own app that, that saves the resources in multiple tabs. So it's. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would imagine in the short term we would be recommending to use JSIPFS in a service worker rather than add leadership election to your browser tab, but it is rad that that works. Yep. Um, and I can see the, the problem that it's trying to tackle is slightly different. Yeah, like uh, if some people could want to use like WebRTC and we are not able to use that in Service Worker, I think. So it's like great to have this op as an option. Another tool and trick in the box. Yep. Um, Lydell, you had another thing on the agenda. Did you want to talk about what uh, to do about web UI? I think we sort of, uh, you sort of re responded what should be uh, the action, like, like the next step for... The, summar the summary is IPFS Companion bundles Web UI directly in it so that when you run it on your Firefox, if you happen to be offline, you can still see the Web UI, which is a noble goal. But because IPFS Web UI is a sloppy build, and not necessarily reduce, re reproducible regardless of operating system and environment, it's now caused us to be kicked off the Firefox add-on store. So I think we should definitely remove web UI from the companion. Yep. That, was, that was the butt of that conversation. Yeah. So like the small, uh, small regression would be, we would not be able to use it in embedded JS APFS unless we restore access to uh, API over window IPFS. We may like look into that again. We could prob probably like widely specific CID path and expose an sandboxed version of API. Like we could just hardcore specific ver version anyway. Yeah, so we'll continue this discussion. Uh, the issue. Okay, all right. Uh, any other business will have to wait till next week or come and see us in hashtag IPFS hyphen GUI and hashtag IPFS hyphen in web browsers uh, in hyphen web hyphen browsers on IRC free node. You can carry on the conversation. Um, otherwise, see you all same time, same place next week. Thank you very much. Yeah. Do-do-do!